Yep, I've got it. Um, welcome. This is the final chapter of the uh, book club for Mastering Shiny, a book by Hadley Wickham. Uh, our book club meets once a week um, through the R4DS Slack channel. Um, and this has been a wonderful book to go through, um, learning all about Shiny and uh, this final chapter is all about um, performance of the Shiny apps. Um, so uh, I'm going to share. Uh, I'm going to share a little bit from the book today, as well as, um, as well as the notes that we have. As um, so, I'll be flipping back and forth. Um, so yeah, um, this, this chapter is all about performance and how to, um, optimize your shiny, uh, user experience to make it, um, as fast as possible for, um, as many users. Um, I, uh, sorry if you have background noise. I think the uh, street sweepers are are coming by, so apologies for that. Um, so I, I did enjoy uh, this metaphor, and, and we're going to get into it a little bit more. Um, but Hadley starts off with uh, comparing shiny apps to a restaurant. Um, in different parts of a restaurant, comparing it to uh, different parts of a shiny app, so that that um, was a good analogy for for how to visualize the performance of of your app. So once we have that in mind, we'll take a look at how we uh, benchmark the app. So that that's going to be setting kind of a baseline and figuring out how we can improve on that baseline to get our app to perform better. Um, so that utilizes a shiny load test package um, and a couple of other things potentially as well. Um, we'll learn how to profile our app uh, using the uh, prof viz package and that's where we actually get into the details of the app itself and and check where the actual slow parts are occurring um and then once we benchmark and profile uh we'll finally uh learn a handful of techniques to optimize our code um, at the end of the notes, and especially throughout this chapter, there's a ton of different examples on optimizing your shiny apps, uh, improving performance. Um, for example, this talk by Joe Cheng, um, our studio comp in 2019. Uh, he goes over Shiny in production, uh, some principles. It's a, about an hour long talk. I definitely um, recommend it if you haven't watched. Um, I think I've watched it maybe a couple of times now. Uh, Joe is really great at giving keynotes. And of course, he is also the creator of uh, Shiny as well. Um, Oh, uh, and there, there's also a, um, a case study that accompanies uh, his talk as well. So it kind of goes through um, it's very similarly laid out to compared to um, 
compared to the chapter. Definitely another great resource to um, check out um, for more for more learning. Let me. Oh, uh, this might be in the resources, but I'm going to pop it in the chat anyway. And I, I think Joe's talk is definitely in the uh, resources at the end. Okay, so we'll Did go to the chance to listen to Joe's talk. Uh, uh, coming. Trevin, did you get the chance to listen to Joe's talk? The Joe's talk on uh, performance. The, did you get a chance to listen to that talk? That was the link is on the book. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I I've listened to it before. I I didn't get a chance to uh, listen to it again this week, um, but I have listened to that talk a couple of times. It's, it's just just so 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 fast like for to explain in the, how the performance works because he really showed exactly like he gave like a clear case study of how to use profiling and there was a significant reduction in the amount of time it takes to process either the the plot or yes i think majorly the plot and other things that were delaying the the shiny app so i think i just wanted to iterate that i I think the, the video is really, really intuitive and helpful to understanding how performance works in our search of what you like. Um, yeah, I think, um, I think you can see it too in, in the, uh, in the example that uh, follows the talk link. Um, you can see some of the plots where um, for each session, the time duration, and then after uh, after some changes and in, in analysis, he's able to shrink uh, like the average time duration for each session. So yeah, definitely, definitely some cool stuff and a uh, great example on how to benchmark and profile and uh, improve your app. Um, so I'm not, so yeah, definitely check that out. Um, so to get started with this analogy uh, of restaurant shiny comparing shiny to a restaurant um this kind of paints a great picture of, of what's going on here um so the the servers not the servers at the restaurant the server the computer server that is um that's going to be your restaurant in this analogy and people come to the restaurant, those are your customers. Um, or in other words, the users will come to your app and um, they'll come to the server. Um, each time uh, a user clicks a link or, or makes a request for your app, that's gonna be an order. Um, and then each, uh, each R process is a chef that fulfills the request. Okay. Um, there's several different ways to, um, improve, uh, efficiency in a restaurant. Um, you can identify slow steps brainstorm ways to make them faster um if uh if a technique for that a chef's using to like cut or dice or or prepare the meal is um 
is inefficient, there maybe there's better methods to speed that up. Um, you can also hire more chefs. Um, in our analogy, that would be uh, creating more R processes. Um, if you want to go big, you can also um, just buy more restaurants, and that way you can serve more customers or users. Um, let's see. So there's, um, Hadley goes into the difference between scaling up and then scaling out. Um, adding more resources allows a server to more run more processes is scaling up. Um, and then at some point you'll have crammed as many chefs into your restaurant as you can possibly manage. Um, and still not enough at that point, you'll need to build more restaurants and that's uh, scaling out. Um, so I think there, there's also an order, like a preferred order to this as well. You you want to make sure you you're maximizing your current restaurant as best you can before you um, build more restaurants, um, because it's just more costly to buy more servers or buy more restaurants. Um, if you can be more efficient with what you have, that's going to be uh, cheaper as well. There all, there's also the note that um, there's a place where the metaphor breaks down. Um, in a normal restaurant, um, a chef can work on multiple dishes at once. Um, R, however, is single threaded, which means that can't do multiple things at the same time. Um, so there is that difference. Um, you can use uh, async programming, uh, but it's a complex topic beyond the scope of the book. Um, so if you are interested, you can check out uh, Promises. And there's, there's one other um, metaphor that, that came up in the book as well. Um, and I think, I think that's, maybe it was here, maybe it was later on, but um, another, another way to save time or, or improve performance is doing all the prep work before um before any orders come from the customers um so in the shiny world you would do all your necessary um data wrangling or 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 whatever before um before it's needed in the shiny app um that way you can uh, optimize and save some time. Um, the next the next bit is uh, benchmarking. Um, so how does how how can you tell if your app handles multiple users well? Uh, that's where using um, tools like Shiny Load Test come in. Um, so the basic premise is that you run your app, record how you interact with the app, uh, and this. Um, 
this should be like it's recommended that this is like the same process each time that way you have something that is um that can be comparable across um different iterations of the app um yeah just having something consistent makes your your test um more reliable um so you can you can like write that the steps down on on how you're interacting with the app and then just making sure that if you do it again that the same steps are repeated um and then uh shiny cannon is used to rerun the session multiple times uh, and then after that, you analyze uh, the log of all the uh, reran sessions. Um, so this goes into installing Shiny Load Test and uh, Shiny Cannon. I was able to get the library, but I think for Shiny Cannon, um, Yeah, for Shiny Cannon, it's um, a bash, bash tool, I believe. Um, you use this in the terminal. Uh, it requires a custom installation. Um, and it defers if, uh, depending if you're on Mac or Windows. Um, so I wasn't able to get this far on my computer. Um, but in this case, you need to actually uh, install Java, download uh, Shiny Cannon, and then uh, install and run. So that lets you like simulate multiple sessions at once. Okay, so this is how it works. You you run your app, and then uh, I believe in the second session you use um, Shiny Load Test Record Session and the location of that, um, and then you run Shiny Cannon to um, simulate multiple users. I think you want to start off small first and then uh, work your way up from there. Uh, that will uh, save as logs, and then you can uh, inspect the report using a shiny load test report. Um, I think these values can be uh, changed um, as well. Um, to edit the number of simulated uh, workers. Um, and then there was a note in the book um, Okay, yeah, here it was. Uh, while benchmarking works great on your laptop, you likely want to simulate the eventual deployment as closely as possible in order to get the most accurate results. Um, so if, you're, if your company has a special way of serving Shiny apps, uh, talk to your IT folks about setting up an environment that you can use for load testing. Um, so in my case, uh, my apps are deployed on shinyapps.io. Um, I have a like test version of the app. So I, I had asked this in the Slack channel as well. Um, and I believe, at least in my case, um, I would use that um, the the test app to um, 
to run the uh, shiny load test and rerun the session multiple times. Um, so it would be very similar, uh, except it would be pointing to the uh, test app location. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind if you have uh, a different environment which in which you're uh, deploying your app. Okay. Um, oh, so so these are the parameters. Um, uh, the workers is sets the number of parallel users to simulate. Um, so ten would be ten simultaneous users. Uh, load duration minutes determines how long to run the test for, and then you can uh, give it. A directory to uh, save your output. Um, so this this is what um, a report would look like, um, showing how long it takes for your homepage, uh, any JavaScript, CSS, uh, start session, as well as some calculations. Um, so we're going to look, we're going to look for if it performs similarly for every user. Uh, is there slowness in the home page? Uh, is the start session slow? And uh, otherwise, the, uh, most typically, the slowness will be in the calculate, which indicates that some computation in your reactive is slow. Uh, and you'll need to use techniques to uh, to find and fix those bottlenecks. Yeah. So if you see if you see this, you're like, oh wow, um, like why why are these calculations taking so long? Um, that's where profiling comes in. Um, so profiling, we're really looking for where the app slows down. Um, to do that, we use uh, a tool called ProfViz. Um, so it will create a, a flame graph that, that we will interpret. Um, so here we have, uh, we have function f uh, that pauses. And then calls a function g. And there's a pause in g. G call g um, calls h. And uh, h is a pause. So this is a good simulation to see like um, multiple functions happening at once, and then the pauses. Um, you can see how much time is actually supposed to uh, elapse. Um, so this is, this is only for, um, This is not specifically shiny. This is uh, just showing off the what the app is doing. Um, so if we um, it goes through and and visualizes what it's doing, uh, F is running, then then G and H. Um, finally, we get. Uh, Finally, we get this graph. Uh, this is the actual flame graph. Um, and we, we can see F is taking the longest. And then uh, uh, we can see G and H, uh, what's going on there. And 
And this is the actual uh, results of profiling F with Profiz. Uh, not much changes when profiling a Shiny app. Uh, to see the difference, I'll make a very simple app that wraps around uh, F. Uh, so we have a action button, push me, and then uh, F. Um, so very similar. Um, the, the main difference is we have uh, at the bottom of the stack, we have run app, and then underneath F is uh, event reactive handler and output Y. Um, there's also two very tall towers. Um, generally, these can be ignored because they don't take up much time. Um, uh, yeah, so those, those aren't um, too much to be concerned with. Uh, limitations, uh, certain C functions that don't regularly check for user inter interrupts. Uh, these are the same C functions that you can't use control, escape control plus C to stop run. Um, that's generally not a good programming practice, but they do exist. Uh, Sys.sleep asks the operating system to park the process for some amount of time. So R is not actually running. This is why we had to use uh, profiz pause. And then downloading data from the internet is usually done in a different process, so won't be tracked by R. Okay, so we've benchmarked our app, um, we've profiled it, and we've checked out the the graph, um, and we've identified spots where it's taking a long time and there's room for improvement. Um, so how do we actually go ahead and do that? Um, there's a few methods uh, which we'll get into. The, the first one brought up is uh, caching uh, using Find cache, um, caching of any reactive value or render function it uses cache keys, um, keep them as simple as possible. Uh, date time dependent results, uh, cache has a fixed sized and uh, scope. Um, so what, what caching is, Oh, and again, there's there's a lot of different ways to um, improve our performance. Uh, to good, two more. Excuse me, two more resources that are great. Uh, advanced R. There's an improving performance section and uh, the book efficient R programming. Um, as well as another R Studio conference talk uh, by Alan Dippert. Um, so caching is uh, it's it's really helpful. Um, basically, it's like it takes a snapshot, and then uh, if you go to revisit the page or I believe if another user visits it, um, I, I might've gotten that wrong. I think it might just be for each user. It like takes a snapshot of the result and you don't have to redo that computation. It will just have it in the cache so you can load it from there and it's, 
much quicker the like the second time. So you can cache plots, you can cache reactives. Um, depending on the results of your flame graph, that uh, that might determine how um, how you end up caching. Uh, by default, the plot cache is stored in memory, never bigger than 200 megabits, is shared across all users, a single process, and is lost when the app restarts. Uh, you can change this default for individual reactives or for the whole session. So yeah, definitely, definitely some uh, some good stuff there. Um, some other optimizations to think about. Uh, do as little as possible. Um, so if there there's code that's not necessary, then you can take that out. Um, otherwise, it's only slowing down your app. Um, do prep work outside of the server. Um, so take whatever code outside of the server and put it somewhere else in the Shiny app. Um, you can do your prep work outside of Shiny. I think I alluded to that earlier. If you have um, if you have data munging or or data wrangling that you need to do, um, do all that outside of Shiny. You can schedule it like overnight when nobody uh, is utilizing the app. And that way, it can be ready in the morning. Uh, when when you're you expect users um so yeah schedule schedule your data munging or or uh wrangling um let's see use the fastest import method available um so if you have a flat file try uh, fread or room instead of read.csv or read.table. Uh, save with write feather and uh, you can use read feather. Um, it's a binary fi file format that can be considerably faster to read and write. Um, and then if you have objects that aren't data frames, try using QRead, QSave instead of uh, read RDS, save RDS. Um, only do the slow stuff if requested. Um, and then learn async programming, which is, uh, I think, outside the scope of this. Uh, you can also manage user expectations, putting in like um, some type of indicator where they understand that your app is working and processing um, that can go a long way in the uh, user experience. Um, and yeah, if, if you do want to learn more, um, the async programming can be learned uh, uh, using the promises package. Um, other than that, I would highly suggest um, checking out all these resources. Um, some of them we've already mentioned. Uh, 
Shiny in production talk by Joe Chang. Uh, here's the um, example that goes along with that. Um, advanced R by Hadley Wickham, efficient R uh, book as well. Another R, R Studio conference talk, make Shiny as fast as possible. Um, caching. And then I'm not sure what these two are. Uh, I just wanted to add that um, Van 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 Valimut or so. I am not really so good at the pronunciation of her name. I just hope I didn't model the name. Um, she also gave a talk on asynchronous um, programming in the last Shining conference. Uh, I think that could be checked too. Uh, let me see if I can get the link and I'll drop it in the chat box. So for anyone who will be watching this after on. Yeah, try, try to find in a link if you can. Yeah, I'm checking for it. I'll, I'll drop it in the chat when I see it. Because I think she posted about it on LinkedIn today. You can go on. I would post it when I said. Um, I was just going over the other links. Um, okay. There's one about the flame graph, and then the other one uh, was going over caching uh, with a weather app example. Um, So showing the difference between um, an app with caching and without caching. Um, but yeah, if you can find that link, that would be great. Because um, otherwise, I think that's um, <clears throat> I think that's all I had for for this chapter. Okay, so interestingly, we have come to the end of come to the end of the this book club, and it's quite interesting. So I've read this with all of you. Um, I mean, even those guys we started with, I got the link, but I'm not sure if it's not going to be the link to the entire playlist. But I just picked it from up. up. This is what I got on YouTube. Uh, I think that's the link. So I think with this, we round up the Machine mm -hmm. Shiny book and uh, I look forward to reading the advanced, um, the R packages book, which you uh, drive in. Then hopefully, uh, uh, based on what uh, I think Hadley said something about, we go forward then uh, going forward, look, it looks, it looks forward to seeing us writing more apps as we've gone through the book and hope the book contributes to our journey. Um, I think that's it. Thank you so much for, <laughs> for this. Thank you for showing up. And uh, I know the other guys will catch up with this video and see that we are done. And um, so it's wonderful reading this course and this whole thing with you guys. So, um, grazie. Grazie, grazie mille. Thank you very much. Thanks, Matthew. Um, yeah, I can hear you. Are you muted? Can you, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. Sorry, I I actually put the audio on mute because I was trying to listen to the, to check which of the video was the right video on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so you want to say something? Uh, no, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I am glad that we went through this book. Um, uh, it was very helpful to um, go through with other people and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the R packages as well. Um, I think hopefully, hopefully everyone is able to um, make the discussion with uh, Hadley Wickham 
uh, we're talking, uh, I think it's Gosh. going to be discussion on this book, Mastering Shiny and Advanced R. Um, so looking forward to that. I actually look forward to that too, but it's a bit dicey. But I'll do everything possible to see how I can be able to make it for that meeting. I was just trying not to commit and say, oh, I'll be there and later on not show up. So that's why, but I'm trying to make sure I can find time that very day because that day there are other things to also happen because I'll be running up my master's here and um, it's good to be a very tight day. Okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully you can make it. Uh, otherwise, uh, hope to see you in uh, in uh, future book clubs. Same here. So um, have a great day.